This conference will now be recorded. So I would like to ask you whether I'm audible to all. Yes. Hey. This is Mona here, yes. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Heavy? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Maulali, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So I can hear your voice and uh, I have uh, other, other participants, Pavani and uh, Viveka. Yeah, yeah, Pavani here. Yeah, okay. So I hope all of you are able to hear my voice clearly so that we can, we are now in a position to start our session. Okay. Once again, good evening to all of you, and uh, please keep your, uh, you know, voices in mute, unless of course you want to ask some question. So suggested is keep your voices in mute and let me be the speaker. And uh, later, whenever you have any kind of doubts, please feel free to switch on your unmute yourself, and then you can ask. So that way, we avoid a lot of disturbance. Okay. So having said that, let's uh, begin today's uh, Azure session. Now, this is going to be an introductory session for those who are attending for the first time. And we are going to talk about Microsoft Azure fundamentals uh, as one of the uh, important modules that we need to understand. Okay. So within this, we are going to cover a variety of topics. Uh, such as what do you mean by an Azure cloud computing, computing solution itself, uh, very briefly, of course. And then we are going to get into the Microsoft Azure cloud platform and what are the different types of cloud management tools that are available to us and uh, what are the different types of cloud services which are offered uh, as Azure cloud offerings. What are the different geographical regions, data centers, zones, and what are the other fundamental uh, aspects of services that as a cloud administrator, you need to manage? These are some of the focus areas of today's discussion. Okay. So without any further uh, delay, what I want to do is I want to share my screen with you so that first of all, we are going to kick off our session by a very, very brief introduction of what cloud computing is. And uh, all of you are familiar that cloud computing is basically a methodology of accessing cloud services or cloud services are offered by different vendors across the globe. And these services are basically rented, are basically uh, accessed by the end users. These end users can be individuals, they can be companies starting from small scale organizations, medium scale organizations or large scale organizations. So basically the idea is various types of cloud services are provisioned, provided by the cloud vendor. And these services are essentially rented or accessed by companies and based on their usage utility, these services are basically charged. That means we are going to pay for those services as a pay as you go basis. Okay, just like we pay for electricity and that we consume. Now, the second thing is you must be uh, asking yourself is uh, what are the different types of cloud services which are provisioned and what are the methodologies by means of which these services are provisioned to the end users by Microsoft or by Amazon or by any other cloud vendor if you see and we are going to particularly uh, stick on to uh, Microsoft Azure as our main core discussion. Okay, so somebody is requesting, uh, uh, you know, presenter. I don't think there is a presenter request uh, needed to be done here because I will be the presenter throughout the session. Okay, so uh, hope this part is clear. So let's uh, begin with the uh, cloud platform itself. <clears throat> now, let me take you to, let me share my screen with you. Okay. Now I have, I'm just sharing my screen with you all. So hope you are able to see my uh, browser screen here. Can somebody confirm any one of you? 
quickly? Yes. yes sir. Excellent. So uh, I'm going to quickly launch on to my portal environment. This is basically what we call it as Microsoft Azure portal. What I'm trying to tell here is there are a variety of mechanisms, methodologies by means of which as a cloud administrator, you can administer the cloud resources. OK, one of them, one of the methodologies is using a very convenient platform called as portal. Portal is a graphical user interface platform and uh, very easy to interact with, very intuitive. And at the same time, the management of resources becomes a very intuitive experience for the cloud administrators. If you are all wondering, we are co I'm constantly talking about cloud administration. So I want to reiterate this point that our entire curriculum is going to be centered on cloud administration platform. OK, there are various other kinds of openings that you see in a cloud and in Azure cloud. Uh, for example, if you are uh, interested as a developer, there are whole variety of development uh, channels that are available on cloud. If you are aiming for as a data scientist or as an analyst, then you have a different uh, set of, uh, you know, accessibilities which are available on Azure cloud platform and many more. So having said that our our curriculum from today onwards is going to be exclusively on Azure cloud administration. OK, now what before you launch, before we kick off, some of you may be wondering what exactly is this cloud administration and cloud administration is a is a very comprehensive set of activities which are performed by administrators on cloud uh, and uh, on behalf of their organization or organizations. So in a very simplistic manner, I can say that if you are joining a company as a cloud administrator, then there are certain set of activities related with cloud administration that you will be performing on cloud on behalf of your organization. A very simple example that I can quote here is that you may have to create and manage virtual machines on cloud. So virtual machines, what are they and uh, how they are created, how they are managed, of course, are going to be a very comprehensive topic in itself in cloud administration, which we will be looking at in the forthcoming sessions. But I'm just giving you an idea that this could be one of the one of the very simple responsibilities that you may be taking up as a cloud administrator, creating, managing, deploying virtual machines, creating, managing, deploying uh, virtual networks, and creating and uh, managing various types of security aspects, creating and managing different types of data governance policies, and also performing monitoring activities on a variety of cloud resources. These can be some of your important management activities as a cloud administrator. OK, now in order to perform any of such type of activities, you need as in a cloud administrator some kind of an interface through which you can be linked with your cloud platform. What is a cloud platform that I will get into in a little while, especially for the beginners. But in order to get that kind of an interface where you are going to connect with your cloud resources and then manage them, one of the mechanism is through portal. So if you see on my browser, I'm going to enter portal dot you can see here yeah if you can observe i have entered a very common uh, very simple uh, url here portal.azure.com and as soon as i click on this one you will notice that i will be uh, uh, launched onto a different screen over here where i'm going to i have to specify a user account now this is another aspect which all of us are, have to understand as beginners when, when we say a user account it is basically a set of credentials which are created and managed uh, by administrators basically for their company employees okay so employees or administrators they basic or as an individual suppose you are an individual and you would like to access the cloud resources you definitely must have some kind of a 
account user account this may be your gmail account this may be an outlook account that you have or any other account that administrators basically create in my own case i'm just using this particular account so as soon as i click on my user account i will be prompted to enter a password now this is one type of authentication which is performed on a cloud platform to ensure that only authenticated individuals get an entry onto your cloud platform so this is already one layer of security that you are looking at as soon as i click on sign in and provided my credentials are correct it looks as if i made a mistake so i'll just reconnect or retype my credentials and once i do that uh, i may be just ask some additional questions over here and then i'm good to go so now as as soon as you can see that you have provided the correct uh, essential uh, credentials for yourself then you are already logged into your uh, cloud platform and you can see a variety of icons options available to you if you are a beginner and if you're looking at the screen for the first time it may appear little confusing but uh, trust me it is very very simplistic uh, at, at a later point of time you will feel so so one of the areas to which i would like to bring your attention right now even as we are speaking is that this part as you can see that every account is eventually eventually linked up with what is known as a subscription okay now in microsoft azure parlance in microsoft azure terminology the word subscription is nothing but it is a kind of a container it is kind of a key as you can see and uh, very intuitively specified by a key symbol here which is going to uh, you know through which the resources of cloud can be accessed uh, to by a company or by an individual or whatever the uh, end user may be so in in my own case as you can see that my subscription name is basically demo pay as you go kind of a subscription i have and uh, if you are a very beginner i would like to reiterate this point that a subscription is basically like a key through which cloud resources can be made accessible to you okay in other case a subscription is always tied up with your own account account that you have seen just now where i have logged in if you want to know more about the subscription part of it and i suggest everybody should be doing a little bit of exploration as a beginner as a beginning just you have to click on this particular link here and you will be taken to another blade now the term blade is very important in azure because a blade is nothing but a subsequent navigatable screen that you see uh, which is currently opening up on your uh, platform on your screen okay now even as this is getting the screen is getting more populated you would be uh, observing that on my left side a variety of options re related to my subscription which i'm highlighting on top and you can see a variety of management options are available to me and as a cloud administrator one of your responsibilities is to understand some of these very frequently uh, used activities okay uh, at this point i'll just like, like to take a, a little pause here and ask everybody is my voice clear and is the uh, what you can say the screen visible to you which i have shared any one person can just confirm very quickly. yes yes okay excellent so, <coughs> excuse me so <clears throat> on the left side whatever the options that you are looking at <clears throat> you are basically looking at uh, the management options like uh, identity access management that you can see over here and through which and i'll be talking about many of these in you know options which i go along but don't worry about it as of now because we are just familiarizing ourselves what is a subscription and what are the different management activities that we have related with the subscription you can see that i can manage my subscription i can cancel the subscription rename it there is some option which is called as changing the directory and switch offer and so on and so forth okay <clears throat> at the same time uh, you can also observe that every subscription has some kind of a unique identification available with it. Okay. So what is the importance of this is that 
every time a subscription is created for a user, a very, very unique ID is generated, which is globally unique. That means nobody on this planet will be sharing the same code of a subscription as you have here or your own subscription, uh, what you are going to have. Okay. And you can see here, there are other options which are available to you and about which I'll be speaking at a later point of time. So my main idea was to bring you to this particular screen just to familiarize yourself that what exactly is a subscription. And now that we have some kind of a notion about it, let us go to other aspects of uh, you know cloud computing so <clears throat> you can see that this is a portal platform and <clears throat> on my left side you will be able to see uh, a plus symbol where you can create deploy and manage different types of cloud resources so that means as an administrator one of your responsibilities is to create resources on behalf of your company or for your company usages and then deploy them, manage them, and secure these resources, do all kinds of data governance activities on these resources. And therefore, you have one very important option on your top left corner that you see is create a resource over here. There is a home option that is available that obviously takes you to the main home page, right? If you are interested to see what home page looks like, you can see that this is what we actually landed up the moment we logged in. And on my top right corner, you will be able to see where my mouse is currently hovering that I can see the account with which I have logged in. And also when I click on this, I will be able to see some additional uh, drop down options like I can view my account, I can switch directory. So in case if you are wondering what exactly this directory is all about, just note just one simple point. As soon as you log into your uh, account, Azure automatically places you within your home directory and that home directory is basically the same name with which you are currently logged in and in some parlances this is also called as tenant. So you can imagine that suppose multiple companies will be accessing cloud resources for example companies like uh, say for example HCL or Wipro or uh, some other company they must be individually or they must be independently connecting to cloud and accessing and deploying various types of resources for their own organization. So every company can become one tenant. So that is what I meant to say. A tenant is basically somebody who is logged in and who is connected to cloud with some account, with some subscription and through which some cloud services are accessible to that particular uh, company or individual <clears throat> this is basically what is called as a tenancy and since multiple companies can ind independently connect manage their own resources on Microsoft Azure cloud as per their requirements we call this kind of an environment as a multi-tenancy environment okay please feel free to uh, ask any questions if you have in between and you can also see that there is a provision for you know easily signing out whenever you want to come out of this cloud platform so once you have familiarized yourself with the home option i will be getting into my next class what is the importance of dashboard what is the why administrators you know prefer to create dashboards and manage these dashboards or you can say that the entire administrative activities are created and managed through the a very intuitive interface called as dashboards. We will talk about it in our next session. But for the time being, since we are already into a portal platform, I would like to tell you what are the different type of services which are available to you on cloud. So for that, as an administrator, you of course must be very, very thoroughly familiar with these services. And they are basically categorized as compute, network, storage, web, mobile, and many other type of classes of services that you can see. And at the same time, every class of service has some subcategory of services within them. For example, if you look at the cloud services, oh, sorry, if you look at the compute services that I am uh, showing over here, 
you can see that a variety of compute services are uh, you know sub services are available to you and as a simple example if you are interested to create and manage virtual machines on behalf of your company and what these virtual machines are how they are created will be a very elaborate discussion which i will be having to you which will be which i'll be having with you in my forthcoming sessions okay but as of now just look at the list of compute services on your screen and get familiarized with these some of these services virtual machines are of course uh, the methodology by means of which we as administrators deploy create deploy manage virtual machines and let me tell you a virtual machine is basically a kind of an environment which is created on a actual server environment in some data center in some geographical region this is a very very important point to remember that means whenever as an administrator i choose to create a virtual machine and i as i begin to create the process of virtual machine creation what will happen is i will be constantly asked in which geographical region do i want to create this virtual machine now for the beginners who are for the first time listening to this terminology a geographical region is actually a, a collection of one at least one and it can be more than one data centers in some geographical area on our planet to give a very simple example if you take south india in south india somewhere in the region of south india like a, like bangalore or chennai or hyderabad there must be at least one or maybe more than one data centers right and these data centers are actually connected with each other by a very low latency networks this is a very important point to remember at least there must be one data center in each geographical region now whenever we try to create and deploy any of these resources that you see here we will be always prompted to specify in which geographical region do we want to create and deploy these virtual resources okay and at that time the selection of our geographical region uh, when we do that we are actually pointing out to a specific data center or data centers in which our particular resources will be created and managed uh, are there any questions until now yeah ravi this is mala there yeah uh, ravi um, how to uh, add the how to manage the citrix uh, cloud may, may, uh, means uh, janapo jan desktop uh, desktops how to uh, add in microsoft azure in the cloud no 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 i think we have gone little uh, much more than what is the scope for the current session molali okay uh, this is demo session i know but uh, i don't know exactly in the microsoft azure i don't know i am my platform as in the citrix cloud just okay. um, i'm asking i don't know about in azure so that's why i'm asking yeah when we get on to a topic like citrix on microsoft azure platform we are basically uh, deviating from our our own uh, agenda right so i request that at least you wait for uh, you know for a more advanced session or at least for a next session at least okay where uh, if you are able yeah. to me, then i will be able to make more suggestions as to what ex what exactly is your question can you repeat it molali i will anyway note down your question whatever you have asking can you could you kindly repeat that okay how to manage in the gen desktop and gen app applications and desktops in this city uh, microsoft azure cloud so you are asking me to mention a complete methodology here yeah yeah no 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 uh, molali this is basically we are we, this is way way beyond our uh, current uh, at least day one discussion okay okay and, uh, yeah okay how and, many uh, regions uh, wise in the uh, microsoft azure regions totally okay that's a very uh, fundamental question basically so uh, i the, uh, no just uh, just a minute i think uh, what about the other participants 
are there any questions from other participants anything fundamental no. related with this particular session that we are currently going on no okay so uh, see now we are coming to one specific question from Maulali, which says that what exactly do you mean by a region and how many such type of geographical regions are there now if you are a beginner the number the number one point you need to keep in mind is creation and deployment of various virtual resources whether they are citrix virtual desktop essentials which you can see are part of the compute services here and perhaps that is what uh, Maulali is essentially yeah, yeah. referring to. Is it not? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, you see, that is what basically, see, he is referring to one of the services which are provided under compute services. Whereas I am referring to a very fundamental, you know, virtual machines, function apps, container instances, and so on and so forth, like disks also. Okay. Now, coming to question which Maulali has asked, you see, uh, there are about 54 regions even as we speak of uh, on Microsoft Azure platform and these 54 regions are scattered across various continents across the globe. Okay, you may see these regions in the form of uh, Australian regions, Asia Pacific regions, Latin American regions, South, uh, South Asia Pacific regions and so on and so forth. US of course, European, Canada, to mention a few there are a variety of uh, you know scattered regions across the globe why it is very important to understand the the uh, you know the presence of these data centers across the various parts of the globe it is very important to know them because whenever we are actually deploying our cloud resources no matter what type of cloud resources they are you can see some of their listing over here and you need to ensure that these resources are brought very close to your business which means suppose your entire business is concentrated within india itself and so therefore your focus would be to create deploy and manage all these resources within the india region itself so that you are very very close to your uh, resources and at the same time, the management of these resources can be done at a with, a with a very less amount of bandwidth, right? And with less amount of latency. Latency is nothing but a delay between a request and a response that is coming, okay, from anywhere. So therefore, whenever we are talking about a geographical region, you always have to ensure that you are deploying your resources in those type of geographical regions where you have where you have uh, you know a specific uh, you know presence of your business or your customers suppose your business is basically related with customers you have to ensure that your business is closest to your wherever the customers are located across the globe hope this question has been answered okay okay uh, so now, in our example, what we have seen, we have looked at some of the compute services and one of them, as you can see, is the virtual machines. There are also some other services like function apps and also you have something called as virtual machine scale sets. So basically, when you say virtual machine scale sets, these are essentially a collection of, you know, identical virtual machines in which you can deploy your business applications and you can ensure that these scale sets are basically uh, for load balancing purposes and uh, you can easily scale out or you can easily scale in based on the load or based on the bandwidth that you are currently experiencing on each of these virtual machines okay and we will be learning in our forthcoming classes how to create and manage various uh, virtual machine scale sets what is the importance of it and one of the most uh, important uh, you know aspects of computing services is this container services in which multiple instances of applications can be run on a single virtual machine okay so containers basically make uh, a create a kind of an environment or as a cloud administrator through containers you can create an environment 
through which multiple instances of applications can be run on one single virtual machine itself. And similarly, you have other uh, compute services like which you will be using very often as a cloud administrator is availability sets. And you can see you have seen already scale sets over here and on a very similar note, you will be having something called as availability sets where as a cloud administrator, you can deploy multiple virtual machines as a part of one single availability set to ensure that there is a uh, application redundancy in your environment, which means suppose if you are running a very highly critical business application on a virtual machine in some geographical location in some data center. Now, for some reason, that particular virtual machine fails for some reason, of course, then your entire business critical application comes to a uh, standstill or crashes or whatever, and then your business can be interrupted. Now, to avoid such type of situations, you have something called as an availability sets as a part of cloud offering, where the same application can be run on multiple virtual machines, so that even if one particular virtual machine is not available, then automatically the other virtual machine can be brought into the picture so that the business interruption does not take place. Similarly, you can create and manage various types of disks. And when I say disks, we are actually talking about virtual disks actually. Okay, and I'll be talking about all these details in a separate session. Now that we have got hopefully some kind of a notion as to what compute services are, let's look at something of network services now you see any of the services which i'm touching right now whether it is compute or network or storage one of your critical responsibility is to not only deploy these services but also ensure security for these services let's go back one step what we did previously compute now in compute service let's suppose if i'm creating as a cloud administrator a virtual machine on which a very business critical application has to be deployed. That is my business requirement. Let's say not only is my requirement to create a virtual machine is important, but what is important also, how do I secure this virtual machine as a cloud administrator? Microsoft Azure provisions various types of security layers. That is what I want to talk about as part of uh, cloud fundamentals administration fundamentals is that security is one of the most basic aspects that you as a cloud administrator has to manage okay and of course when we come to uh, whether we are talking about containers or availability sets or disks we have to ensure what is the security aspects that we are going to provision on them coming to networking itself networks Networking has a variety of, you can see 28 different category of subcategory of network services are available. And one of the most prominent ones that you see where my mouse is currently hovering is creation and management of virtual networks. A virtual network can be just an extension of your own company network, but it is on cloud. Okay. So one of your in responsibilities as a cloud administrator is to create and manage and secure the virtual network for your company. It is also possible during the creation of a virtual network, you may have to divide the virtual network into multi multiple segments, multiple partitions. Each partition is called as a subnet. Okay. And in our forthcoming discussions, again, I will be talking about what are subnets and how to create and manage virtual networks along with the subnets. And when, while we are on the topic of network networking as a main one of the main services, you have to understand what load balances load balancers are, how do they function, how are they created and deployed and secured on a cloud platform for your company. All these are also going to be some of the most important critical aspects of networking that you will be doing as a cloud administrator. Okay, and I'm going to take one more service for your example, and that is the storage services here. 
So when I click on storage service, you will be able to see that you are a variety of storage uh, services are available in the form of storage accounts. That means this is a mechanism you are going to provide for your company employees or company in which employees can share their files, folders, you know, different types of uh, file formats, PDF documents, video files, audio files, whatever is related with the business they want to store and access control on cloud platform, all that is provisioned through storage accounts. So one of your responsibilities as a cloud administrator is to create and manage store account and also secure the various storage accounts that you are going to create. And of course, you can see there are some more advanced uh, storage options like data lakes. And uh, you also have something like uh, data, data share invitations and many more are there. And some of them we are going to discuss in our cloud platform, uh, cloud administration as a part of that activity. Okay, any questions until now? No. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know what your backgrounds are basically to what extent you are uh, exposed to Microsoft Cloud, uh, Azure Cloud. So therefore, yeah. I'm going to be actually uh, after that. Yeah, go ahead, please. May I know who I'm speaking yeah, to? Actually, uh, Yes, Pavani. Yeah. Uh, after Pavani. this, I mean, after this uh, demo, I need a small clarification about my field and what is the, I mean, what is the next extent level of uh, my field in Azure and all. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, uh, yeah, after the class, I, I will discuss it with you. Okay. Anybody else would like to voice? Any other, uh, you know, uh, aspects related with your own uh, expectations from this demonstration? Because I want to make and, it very clear. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, one minute. And administration is uh, necessary to do anything in Azure? No means development part or else see uh, I think uh, I, I was seen in YouTube that IAAS and uh, SAAS and uh, PAAS like that three sessions yes to do yeah to do uh, I mean IAAS is admin part right yes partly yes it, it's a it's a, it's essentially focusing on the administrative activities I, to a large extent Correct. yeah yeah I'm having a doubt that uh, if uh, we want to do PA mm -hmm. platform as a service. Hello. Uh, Pavani, we lost you for. Uh... Hello. Yeah, we can hear you now. Hello. We lost you. Yeah, I can hear you. Hello. Uh, go ahead, Pavani. If you are uh, able to hear me, you can go ahead. Yeah, one minute. Your voice is not audible. One minute. One minute. Is it? Okay. okay. Is my voice clear now? Yes. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you, Pavani. I can hear you clearly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. if we want to do uh, uh, a development part uh, is PAS, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if we want to go to the development part also, uh, is it necessary to learn admin in Azure? No. no, no. Let me, first of all, I was actually coming to that part uh, for the, during the closure of this particular session. But since you have already put up this okay. uh, very, very good question, yeah, go ahead. If you are any other doubt you have. No, uh, I... yeah, I'll clear my doubt after this class. Uh, that is what I have told you before. You please okay. continue the class after that. I'll go. Yeah, yeah. See, your question is very much part of this discussion itself because one of the most fundamental things you have to understand whenever we are talking about cloud services is that Microsoft Azure is provisioned to the end customers as three distinct okay. of services in three distinct buckets 
you may you may assume like that one is called as infrastructure as a service okay when we talk about infrastructure as a service we are basically referring to a set of uh, you know uh, activities which are provided by microsoft itself for example my in infrastructure as a service microsoft provisions the entire hardware pure hardware along with the virtual platform right to the end users or to whoever is is uh, you know accessing wants to access these resources now either as an individual or as a company as an organization your responsibility would be to build your virtual environment on top of this hardware layer which is provisioned by microsoft this is called as a shared responsibility shared responsibility means partly the ownership is of microsoft and the ownership here i'm talking about in case of infrastructure as a service is the entire hardware platform that means the bare metal servers the virtualization software all these things are provisioned by microsoft itself in some data center in some geographical region okay now as a company as an individual or as an individual your responsibility would be to build your cloud resources such as virtual machines virtual networks and various other applications data on top of this particular hardware platform which is provisioned by microsoft okay now in this the majority of the cloud administration gets concentrated which means as a infrastructure as a service when you are leveraging it the cloud administrators generally have the responsibility of creating managing all the virtual machines the deployment of various applications and create a platform for the deployment of applications databases database servers you follow and a variety hold hold of variety of these tasks are performed on top of the hardware layer which are which is provisioned by microsoft so this is a kind of a shared responsibility as you see okay the second one which you talked about is platform as a service in the platform as a service basically much of the virtualization as well as the hardware platform is taken care by microsoft itself okay okay yeah your responsibility or your company's responsibility would be just to focus on your business end that means mm. what are the type of business applications that i need to develop for my customers what are the different type of customized applications mobile applications apis that i i as a company need to develop using developers and using a set of what are known as software development kits like python node.js asp.net and many more using these things okay. you are going to only focus on the business aspects of your uh, company you don't have to worry about in which geographical region on which virtual machine my application would be deployed you do not have to worry about that that part virtualization layer is entirely taken care by microsoft itself you just have to focus on your own business application okay. deployment testing uh, you know production environment how to shift this uh entire uh, you know application from a testing environment to a production environment and make it available to the end users all these are going to be your focus areas okay, okay. in the last one which we talked about that is called as a software as a service it is basically the entire end to end ownership is taken care by microsoft itself and you just have to utilize the pre built applications which are provided by microsoft pre built applications there are certain customized applications which are already developed and made available on cloud okay for instance let's suppose if you are if you are a company if you are a company having your own infrastructure don't you think that your own custom applications will be running on a set of computers yes or no that's very simple to uh, imagine you, your company will be having its own you know customized applications database servers outlook application 
your, your company will be having its own uh, MS Office platforms. All these things are provisioned uh, to the employees of your company. Yes or no? Now imagine yes. the same set of applications are available on cloud itself. You follow? Okay. On cloud itself. Yes. You are utilizing the services from the cloud directly built and available, made available on the cloud. You are actually utilizing something which is called as a software as a service so now this is a very critical discussion that is also part of my current discussion itself it is not something that i have just brought in uh, in a ad hoc manner because whenever we are talking about microsoft azure we need to very well understand what is meant by shared responsibility okay now in this i have provided three different uh, structures to you infrastructure as a service where a part of it is owned by Microsoft and the part is owned by your company itself. Okay. And then you have a platform as a service in which a larger chunk is owned by Microsoft. And the company, as a company, you need to focus only on your, what your business okay. needs. Yeah. So okay. you are offloading much of the responsibility to uh, Microsoft itself. You're offloading that so that you are only, you know, kind of a lightweight and you just have to focus on your business applications. Okay, so now coming to, uh, you know, who provisions or what is the uh, cloud administrator do? You see, the cloud administrator's job is very, very vast. It's a huge responsibility. And uh, talking about that in one single sitting would be very difficult for me. So actually, I want to segregate this into multiple discussions. And in the forthcoming sessions, I'll be talking in a phased out manner about cloud administration and what are the different administrative tasks we'll be looking at practically okay we'll be actually doing it now coming to your own question what if i am a developer what if i'm not interested in you know uh, administration part of it that's fine because if you're only focusing on a development platform then microsoft azure provisions you with those set of uh, you know services or those set of uh, you know, uh, catalog of information or set of services, which you can utilize and uh, deploy as a cloud, uh, as a cloud developer, or you follow what I'm trying to say, as a purely yeah. developer platform. You need to, you can focus only on that and you don't have to worry about the administration aspects of it. Okay. okay. Similarly, if you are an analyst, see, that's what I'm trying to tell you in the services. If you go, you have something called DevOps. And you can see you are, you can create and manage various devops projects application insights api management services are available to you right okay. and as a developer perhaps this will be your area where you will be more focusing on without having to actually understand what is the underlying administration and all that's not your concern at all in this case okay yeah. similarly if you are talking about analysis you see you have something called analytics here and when we are talking about analytics, you have, of course, you can uh, work with different types of data sources. That means as an entity, as an organization, your data, your organization must be getting data from a variety of data sources, structured, unstructured, semi-structured, streaming data, right? And as an analyst, you may, your responsibility would be how you can integrate all this data into one single repository like sql data warehouses you can see over here okay and then using some reporting structures you can see there is something which is power bi embedded if you are observing it then this is one of the very prominent uh, renowned uh, business intelligence analytics platform okay which are used by analysts in order to gain insights into their data. And of course, and it is a reporting tool, tool, right? Beg your pardon. It is a reporting tool, right? Yeah, it's a reporting. Tool. That's what I'm saying. It's an analytics platform. So eventually yeah. analytics platform, when I say you are going to create a variety of reports in the form of charts, yeah. graphs, you know tables and so on it's the a, only power no actually only power bi we will provide i mean uh, through azure we will provide only in power bi or else uh, we can i mean uh, 
reporting tools like SSRS, uh, I, th I think more reporting tools are present right. in Microsoft, right? Of course, of course, of course. You can not only you can uh, utilize Power BI, okay? okay, but you can also, you know, bring out the entire package like SSRS reporting services of Microsoft into picture okay. through which you can get a deeper insights into your, uh, you know, organizational data, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so now we are talking about a specific people who are only concerned with analytics. See, Microsoft Azure provisions that you have data big bricks, you have you know data factories uh, where you can create the pipelines and uh, you know you can use artificial intelligence in order to uh, gain deeper insights into your you know data. Similarly, you have something yeah. called an Internet of Things. I am have having the one doubt actually. Yeah. No, actually, my background is, uh, I mean, I'm working as a, uh, I mean, I'm working on SQL and MSBI. Mm -hmm. And what is the next step in Azure, uh, I mean, to uh, to go with the service IAAS or PAAS or uh, what is the next step for my software program? as a service? SAS. Mm -hmm. Software as a service, I, I think, referring to that. Okay, okay. Okay, go ahead. So your question is, suppose if I am a uh, reporting My analyst. profile is completely, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. My profile is completely SQL developer and uh, MSBI using SSIS ETL tool and SSRS as a reporting tool. Okay. So uh, what is a, I mean, what is, what service uh, is IAAS or PAAS or SAAS? What is a service suitable to my profile? Yeah, yeah, mostly you will be now no, you will not be focusing much on the uh, infrastructure as a service. Okay? okay, and your more focus will be on platform as a service. Right? Okay. You are only going to focus on a specific aspects of your business, such as gaining insights into your data. Right? And working yeah, with a variety yeah, yeah. of data sources. This basically comes yes, under yes. one of uh, designation which is called as a data engineer okay okay, and there is a specific, okay, okay. yeah there is a specific track of examination also for the data engineers if you are mm -hmm. if you want to you know get onto the market as a data engineer then you have what is called as mm -hmm. AZ 200 is the course that you will be basically dealing with in which you are going okay. to learn about those aspects of your uh, engine data engineer where you essentially understand the organizational data structure it and transform the data as per your business policies perform ETL operations extraction transformation loading the data into data warehouses and using a variety of business intelligence platforms in order to garner insights into your business data that will be your one of your core focus areas is it not so okay. yes, yeah, that comes basically as uh, you know as a you can you can imagine it comes as some somewhere in the area of platform as a service yes okay okay, okay. and uh, you will cover all those things right no that that's what i'm telling you the the participants who are currently present in this all of the participants i would like to say that this is basically for cloud administration okay Okay, and uh, is uh, cloud administration is uh, I mean helpful uh, for my profile also? Uh, if I, I uh, uh, yes. See, uh, cloud administration is an entirely different set of activities, uh, mm. which you see you will not be much concerned about spinning the virtual machines, spinning the database servers, or uh, creation and managing the security aspects. This may not be your concern, right? Because okay. yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, you are going to focus on an entirely different type segment of your business for on the behalf okay. of your company. You are going to focus on a different aspect of a business where you need to garner insights into your organizational data. Yeah, if I yeah. Bringing, yes, yes. Bringing a data from different source and uh, keeping it in a data warehouse. You you are quite right. So those those aspects are provided on a cloud platform to you now. See, mm -hmm. 
yes suppose those same activities which you are providing or which you were performing on your own premise premises company premises right okay where you connect your physical servers uh, for example you may be having uh, excel data on your excel sheets you may be having data on your database servers some data on your sap hana or in some other servers mm. right so what you must yeah. be doing is you must be pulling this data from these physical machines and then you must be integrating them transforming them and then pulling them into another loading data, which you are calling it as a, a data warehouse which is another database of yeah. course maybe on a microsoft sql server or teradata or maybe oracle server itself why these are all okay. physically available in your on premises right now imagine oh. if the same activities you are performing on cloud okay then you have to utilize the cloud provisioned services is it not yes so that is where we are going to focus on i mean uh, if you are uh, you know interested to go for a as a data engineer where you understand your organizational data and how you structure it and uh, format it those uh, platforms are provided on cloud itself mm -hmm. right okay so that and even this uh, data factory is there na azure data factory i think correct. it uh, works as a etl tool only right correct yes yes it is part of that uh, you know the the etl chain yes yeah even that lake storage what you said before uh, uh, under power bi yeah that is yes yes hmm. see data lakes are basically uh, you know kind of as you can see data lake storage is there for instance okay okay when you throw in all kinds of uh, data you know whether it is structured unstructured you put everything into a data lake and then yeah yeah eventually you uh you know try to grab uh, this data and transform the data as per your business policies and then you try to put the data into a properly analytical platform for analysis for a deeper okay. analysis yeah so okay. yes data lakes have become very popular people talk about and use data lakes very very frequently right mm. so uh, yeah these are all the things which we which as a data engineer you are going to focus on that's what i'm saying and this may be very different from administration activities of which i am talking about in no actually you will take i mean even for that data engineering uh, what you told me before data engineer ha ha pavan that's what i'm what saying tell me because i i don't focus on data engineer as of now okay okay yeah i i my entire curriculum whoever is present today for all of them i would like to say that this entire discussion would be centered around uh, cloud administration in our forthcoming sessions okay okay okay, uh -huh. okay. so uh, any other questions people have apart from pavani who had a very elaborate discussion maulali you said something what is your requirement after section beg your pardon Uh, hello, uh, Ravi. I would like uh, to discuss with you the completed section, okay, regarding uh, cloud certification and so many things there from my end. Can you come over? To, can you come over to the institute for uh, some time? Is it possible for you to spare some time and visit physically uh, so that we can discuss? Because uh, I mean, right now I'm in office now. I'm able to like in mobile and in this. Okay. okay. And what I'm working in with. Uh, i understand i guess no problems no problems not at all because uh, maulali what i want to tell is uh, if you have any specific discussions please make it a point right now okay don't feel don't uh, i mean don't hesitate you can uh, just uh, whatever the questions you have i'll make a note of it and maybe we can get back to you on a call or uh, some other time in the next sessions no problems okay could you please uh, ping me your uh... Contact number. I will call you. Yeah, sure. Okay, so I'm just opening a chat window here. Okay, I'm entering my mobile number double nine eight nine seven nine seven one one. Ah, 
did you get my mobile number all of you no actually uh, uh, the chat also we didn't in the chat window i have placed it on if you see the window is not uh, not visible okay. is it okay okay never yes, mind yes. what i'll do is uh, i'll open my notepad Uh, if any doubts we can call I, to that number it, right sorry no if any doubt regarding administration and all we can call to that number right yes 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 uh, yes can you see my notepad which i have opened right now yes yes okay i'm just typing my name over here ravishankar and i'm typing my mobile number 9987397111 so kindly make a note of this number yeah okay so make a note visible yes yeah. okay so you please reach out to me and preferably i uh, uh, urge the participants to reach out to me tomorrow around 1 uh, o'clock okay uh, i will be available to answer your queries uh, is it okay uh, maulali tomorrow uh, part time uh, okay ravi okay so tomorrow i believe everybody has a you know it's a government holiday so if you don't mind you can even call me around 10:30 or 10 o'clock between 10 and 10 of 10:30 that would be ideal time okay ravi tomorrow what time you will take in section okay uh, tomorrow there will be no session uh, maulavi we will be taking day after tomorrow uh, okay ravi oh, could you please let me know the timing uh, set, uh, take class timing 5 to 6 same na 5 to 6 uh, okay no problem okay, okay. so my okay, next ravi. session if everybody you know is continuing with cloud administration you can get in touch with our uh, front office uh, you know personnel and uh, uh, complete the formalities whatever they are then then you can just uh, uh, start attending and day after tomorrow our session will be from 5 to 6 kindly make a note of it and i am available tomorrow at between 10 and 10:30 please feel free to call me on this particular number if you have any queries i will be able to take them okay ram okay thank you so much and uh, there are other participants also just let me uh, see that viveka durgesh i haven't heard much uh, from your end so hope uh, uh, this session uh, this is a this, this basically is just a starters you know uh, just a kind of a kick off into uh, compute services and uh, service offerings like ias pass sas from cloud platform and basically we are also looking at a cloud uh, portal of portal that you that you are looking at on your screen through which as a cloud administrator you can create manage deploy a variety of services and trust me we are going to work very elaborately on this platform called portal and we are also going to work on to come sorry how many days how many days it takes to complete admin yeah we have about uh, you know uh, 40 to 45 days uh, one hour every day we will be taking okay Okay, okay okay and uh, yeah should be you can reach out to you can reach out to our front office uh, personnel for details on the uh, durations and everything okay yeah 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 thank you so much for your time and uh, we will meet if everything goes well day after tomorrow at the same time 5 to 6 yeah yes okay yes. thank you so much thank you very Okay okay thank you yeah thank you very much